5 or 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Cut it. Well, it's been a relatively quiet afternoon until now. We're starting to get showers and some thunderstorms that surround the CSRA. Where are they going? And how long will they be here? We'll talk about that with your 5 or 6 forecast today. Right now on News Channel 6 and 4, an investigation underway after a plane crashes in Washington County. We'll have an update. Plus, why the hot weather could impact air quality. And a local teenager dies because of a rare brain-eating amoeba. The story, as your news at 4 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WGBF News Channel 6 at 4. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with a warning from doctors about an invisible danger that can lurk in the water. Amoebas are commonly found in freshwater lakes and rivers. The organism enters the body through the nose and eventually destroys brain tissue. News Channel 6 is Renetta DuBose covering a story live in McDuffie County today where the Thompson community is mourning the loss of Megan Ebenroth, a teenager impacted by this rare infection. Renetta? Thompson High School was a straight A student, tennis player, and involved in a lot of activities. She died July 22nd after being hospitalized for several days with Naglaria filari infection. Georgia Department of Public Health alerted people in the Peach State about someone dying from the amoeba or single cell living organism. It's found in soil and warm fresh water lakes, rivers, ponds, and hot springs. It starts by going up your nose, causing brain swelling, and usually ends in death. Friends and friends affiliated with Bell Mead Country Club raised $5,000 to help the family. We have a golf tournament between all the cartwheels that we've done this year with the second one. And we decided this year, instead of playing for money amongst ourselves, we were going to take all the money we would have played for and donate it to the family. Now, we do not know where Megan was swimming at this time, and that's not what's important. What's important is this amoeba can live in any warm freshwater lakes um, or ponds or rivers. It is not in any oceans at all or swimming pools. Live in Thompson, Renette Dubose, WGBF News Channel 6. Back to you. Doctors also warning of an illness from warm ocean water. This one's called vibriosis, typically caught by eating contaminated seafood as Savannah Denton reports. People can get a Vibrio infection from eating raw or undercooked seafood or through an open wound. Dr. Sean Wynn with Kaizen's Health says because Vibrio bacteria is not easily identified with routine testing, many cases are not reported. Many times we don't know that we have the Vibrio infection. If we do have it at all, most of us just say, oh, I had some bad food and passed it right through. So uh, sometimes we, we think it's often underreported. General symptoms after ingesting the bacteria is diarrhea, abdominal cramping, nausea, vomiting, fever, and chills. Most symptoms begin within 24 hours and can last as long as four days. CDC says fibriosis causes an estimated 80,000 illnesses every year in the United States. More than half of these illnesses are believed to be the result of eating contaminated food. Most uh, individuals have a, um, a low risk because our immune systems are strong. You know, we can go and have a cut or eat things and just pass it, but it's usually the, the people that are at risk with the medical condition who have a weaker immune system that we really see the susceptibility to. I spoke with staff members at Clapback Seafood and Sandwiches in Merle's Inlet who say keeping an eye on reports is how they make sure their seafood is as fresh and uncontaminated as possible. Everything's top quality. Uh, we haven't had any concern whatsoever. There have been no reported infections in South Carolina. Now, there have been three cases in North Carolina this summer. Researchers say pollution and plastics in oceans and other waterways can be a real breeding ground for the disease. As temperatures soar with record-breaking heat across the south, it can also impact air quality. When air quality levels become poor, it can impact people with heart disease, older adults, pregnant women, young children, and people who suffer from lung disease or asthma. The World Health Organization says in Georgia, one out of five deaths related to heart disease or stroke is caused by air pollution. In the morning, um, when they're not, you know, when it is cool and there's not so much air pollution uh, from the, the night prior, then, then the air quality does tend to be somewhat better. The 
CDC says the air quality index is divided into six categories, with green being the best, posing no risk, and maroon being the worst, which is hazardous to everyone. Right now, the heat level sits at yellow. And speaking of heat, time now for... ...detail of your forecast in just a few minutes. Jenny Brandt. All right, Tim, thanks so much. We continue now with a plane crash in Sandersville. Two people were hurt. Tiffany Hobbs has more. It happened around 9.20 this morning. A two-engine plane crashed in a swampy area just beyond these trees here. Washington County Sheriff's Office tells us they responded to a call around 9.45 with the Sandersville Police Department. They say it appeared that 67-year-old pilot Daniel Mesner of Florida had just taken off from the nearby Kalen Airport. 69-year-old Timothy Pfizer of Ohio was the passenger on board. Both have been flown to level one trauma centers in the area. The FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board will investigate the incident. We've had plane crashes here before. I think this is one of the uh, most difficult for our emergency responders to deal with because of the location of where it took place there. And I, I have to commend our emergency services here in Washington County because they did a very good job. All disciplines and agencies coming together to, to be able to get, get these uh, two patients out and get them to, to treatment. We'll have more details on this story on News Channel 6 at 5. In Sandersville, I'm Tiffany Hobbs, WJBS, News Channel 6. People opposed to a potential biofuel plant coming... All right, Tim, thank you. Coming up, a rare sight in the skies this month. Yeah, August full of exciting things. There will be two supermoons. We'll tell you when you can expect to see them next. Uh, here we are already the first day of August and the first of two supermoons just about to reach its peak. Marks the rise of the Sturgeon Moon today and we're going to be able to see it in the U.S. tonight. On August 30th, another full moon will rise at the closest point to our planet this year, making it a very rare super blue moon. This year's fourth and final supermoon will appear in September. More coverage you can count on coming up next on News Channel 6 at 4.30. Including a decision on the future of the U.S. Space Command. Where will it be headquartered? Which part of the country will benefit? The story in a moment. Water damage. Crystal, now you know. The People's Court, weekday mornings at 10 on News Channel 6. The Live Viper 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Well, tonight we're tracking some thunderstorms around the CSRA, some of which producing some pretty heavy rain and gusty winds. We'll have a live look at 5 or 6. I'll show you where these storms are headed, what we can expect for tonight. And we'll look at your Wednesday as well, all coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 at 6, a local teenager dies after being infected by an amoeba in the water. We'll have the details. Plus, Augusta City leaders are... ...and the investigation into a plane crash in Washington County today. The latest as your news at 6 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 6. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brad Mead. And I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins as the McDuffie County community is mourning the loss of a Thompson High School senior who died last month. The cause of death, a rare brain infection. News Channel 6's Rena Tedubo is live in Thompson where Megan Evanroth is being remembered as someone who excelled in the classroom and in extracurricular activities. We're talking about a straight A student who played tennis and participated in a lot of activities. Now, when school starts back as the summer ends, one bulldog will truly be missed. She died July 22nd after being hospitalized for several days with the Glaria Falari infection. Georgia Department of Public Health alerted people in the Peach State about someone dying from the amoeba or single cell living organism. It's found in soil and warm freshwater lakes, rivers, ponds, and hot springs. It starts by going up your nose, causing brain swelling, and usually ends in death. Friends affiliated with Bell Mead Country Club raised $5,000 to help the family. We have a golf tournament between all the cartwheels that we've done. This year was the second one. 
and we decided this year, instead of playing for money amongst ourselves, we were going to take all the money we would have played for and donate it to the family. Now, we do not know where Megan was swimming at the time, but it's important to note that this amoeba can live in any fresh water, and it's also not found in oceans or swimming pools. Live in Thompson, Renata DuBose, WJBF News Channel 6. Back to you. Right, Renata, thank you so much for that. Happens to just a few minutes. All right, Tim, thank you. Two people injured after a plane crash this morning. The aircraft went down in Sandersville, Georgia. Tiffany Hobbs has more. It happened around 920 this morning. A two-engine plane crashed in a swampy area just beyond these trees here. Washington County Sheriff's Office tells us they responded to a call around 945 of the Sandersville Police Department. They say it appeared that 67-year-old pilot Daniel Mesner of Florida had just taken off from the nearby Kalen Airport. 69-year-old Timothy Pfizer of Ohio was the passenger on board. Both have been flown to level one trauma centers in the area. The FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board will investigate the incident. We've had plane crashes here before. I think this is one of the uh, most difficult for our emergency responders to deal with because of the location where it took place there. And I, I have to commend our emergency services here in Washington because they did a very good job, all disciplines and agencies coming together to, to be able to get, get these uh, two patients out and get them to, to treatment. We'll have more details on this story on News Channel 6 at 5. In Sandersville, I'm Tiffany Hobbs, WJBF, News Channel 6. North Augusta leaders are making an effort. Right now on News Channel 6 and 7, a small plane crash in Washington County. The investigation underway will have the latest details. Plus, a local teenager dies because of a rare brain-eating amoeba. We'll have the story. And Augusta City leaders seeking to offset skyrocketing property values. Your News at 7 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 7. Good evening, everyone. You're watching News Channel 6 at 7. I'm Dee Griffith. Thanks so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with a plane crash this morning in Sandersville. Two people were critically injured. Tiffany Hobbs has the details. It happened around 920 this morning. A two-engine plane crashed in a swampy area just beyond these trees here. The Washington County Sheriff's Office tells us they responded to a call around 945 of the Sandersville Police Department. Public Works employees were in the area and they heard a, a loud crash and then they heard people yelling for help. The crash site is about half a mile from the Sheriff's Office. Cochran says officials responded to the call within minutes. They had, they had significant injuries so getting information from them was very, very grave at the time so we, we really didn't able to ask them very many questions. They say it appeared that 67-year-old pilot Daniel Mesner of Florida had just taken off from the nearby Kalen Airport. 69-year-old Timothy Pfizer of Ohio was the passenger on board. When rescue personnel got to them, Cochran says they were waiting in waist-high mud. The, the safest place ever would have been to go in that, you know, that boggy marsh, marsh which, would, uh, which helped with impact. So I, I think that was so, so smart of the pilot to, to try to navigate going down in, in that area. Both Mesnard and Pfizer were flown to level one trauma centers in Macon and Augusta. We've had plane crashes here before. I think this is one of the uh, most difficult for our emergency responders to deal with because of the location where it took place there. And I, I have to commend our emergency services here in Washington because it's a miracle that even one of the two that was on that, that flight that was still alive. So thank God was with them. The FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board will further investigate the incident. In Sandersville, I'm Tiffany Hobbs, WJBF, News Channel 6. Doctors are warning about an invisible danger that can lurk in the water. The organism enters the body through the nose and eventually destroys brain tissue. The Thompson community mourning a young lady, Megan Ebenroth, the teenager impacted by this rare brain infection I just described. She died July 22nd after being hospitalized for several days with the infection. It's known and uh, found in soil and warm and freshwater lakes, rivers, ponds, and hot springs. 
It starts by going up your nose, causing brain swelling, and usually ends in death. Friends affiliated with Bellmead Country Club raised $5,000 to help the family. We have a golf tournament between all the cartwheels that we've done. This year was the second one, and we decided this year, instead of playing for money amongst ourselves, we were going to take all the money we would have played for and donate it to the family. This amoeba can live in any warm, fresh water, lake, or river. It is not in swimming pools or oceans. Well, time now for a first.